Erechin Daf Lamed Aleph. A few months ago, when I started the eight-minute Daf, it was in the merit and the Refur Shlema for Shoshana Razi Bas Silka. Today, Shoshana Razi Bas Silka is going through a very major surgery at this very moment. So I'm here at the Kaisal. I prepared the synopsis at the Kaisal, and by Ezra Hashem, we won't have too many dis- disturbances. The Mishnah says, somebody sells a house in the Ari Chaima in a walled city, unlike the Sada where he has two years where he cannot be paida, the Badi Ari Chaima, he could redeem immediately. According to Rebbe, he has to wait though two days. But he only has 12 months to do the Pidyon. And when there's a leap year, then he has 13 months. And every year is a 365 day year, according to Rebbe, even though the lunar year is a 354 day. You give the extra 11 days for Hashlama. And if Yoival falls out in the middle of that year, it doesn't matter. Yoival doesn't cause any issue. Once the 365 days go by, it's considered Chalut. It goes directly to the buyer and it remains in his possession forever. The Torah says Latzmisus, says the Gemara, Latzmisus can be broken down in two ways. Some miss means chalut, that it says forever, and smitsus means even a gift. The Gemara Darshan's three words, and this Machlaik is had a Darshan. It says, Yomim tia gulasoi. So according to Rebbe, it means you have to wait those two days that we discussed. According to Chachamim, it comes to say that the day starts exactly at a specific moment of the Mechira. So if you sold your house at 11.35, that's the time that the year is up, at 11.35. Torah says, Shnas mem karoi, according to Chachamim, it teaches us, miyoyim liyoyim, that it's a complete year, year to year, and according to Rebbe, it teaches us also the concept of meis ace that's the exact hour. The word temima teaches us that there's the ibor. Machlegis had explained it, but one shot is that if there's a 13-month year, we consider the 13 months. The Mishnah raises a very big issue. If Reuven sells his field to Shimon, and later on, Reuven comes back to Shimon and says, I want, I'm sorry, my house, I want my house back, and here's the money, and Shimon lived in the house for six months, that should be ribis. So the mission says, yes, it's ribis and it's not ribis. But the Bryce says, this is true ribis. Shimon got to use the house for free. He got all his money back, the purchase price and everything, and he got to use the house for six months. Says the Gemara that, that Bryce that says that it's, complete ribas must be going according to Chacham. It's a very interesting case where a Malva tells a Leiva, a lender tells a borrower here, I'll give you money on condition that you give me a field as collateral. And if, let's say in five years from now, you don't pay me back, the field becomes mine. Say Chachamim, he can't eat the fruit. Because if he eats the fruit, what happens if the Leiva pays him back completely? Now he has all his money, plus he got the fruit. That fruit is ribas. So according to those Chachamim, he can't stay in the house as well. Because if he stays in the house, what if he gets all his money back for the house? Now he stayed in the house for free. That would be ribis. But according to Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says there's a, a concept called ribis mitzad dechad. If there's ribis that there's potential that it won't be ribis, and potential that it would be ribis, that's not considered ribis according to Rabbi Yehuda. According to Rava, though, you only say ribis mitzad dechad when it comes to a sale, such as a house in our case. But the second case of Chachamim, where there was a halva, there was a loan of money, you don't say ribis mitzad dechad. That's complete ribis. Unless there's a t'nai saying that I will return all my money, whatever it is, I'll return it. If there's ribis, I'll give it back. If, they, if the buyer, if the seller dies, then his son goes into his shoes and you can redeem the house from the son. And if the, the seller dies, the son of the seller goes into his shoes and he can redeem it as well. There's a havamina that you can because it says, Ishkiyimkar dafka, that person that sells. The story goes like this Ruvain sells his house to Shimon. Shimon, in return, sells the house to Levi. So there's two sales that go on here. Ruvain's ear is up. Who gets the house? Quintir of Leazar, very interesting. Every time there's a sale, the clock starts ticking again. In other words, we count again 365 days for the second guy. So the second guy, according to Rebbe Shimon gets the house because this clock started ticking on his watch and Levi didn't redeem it, therefore Shimon gets it. But according to Rebbe the last guy gets the house because there's only one clock according to Rebbe 
Once Reuben sells the house, the, start, the clock starts ticking and we don't restart the clock. And Levi bought all the rights to that property. All the privileges go to Levi. So therefore, he's the one that gets the house. If we have this question all the time with Bar Mitzvah boys. One boy was born in other Aleph in the middle of the month and another boy was born in other Bays in the beginning of the month. In the following years, there's no other Aleph and other Bays. It comes out that the one that was born much later, his Bar Mitzvah is earlier. So the Gemara brings the same case by us. What happens if somebody bought a house in the middle of other Aleph and the other person bought a house in the beginning of other Bays? It comes out that the following year, the year is up for the one who bought his house later, his year is up earlier. And the same thing would apply to a Bechar animal. Bechar animal, you have to, you have to shecht it within a year. If one animal is born in other Aleph in the, in the middle of the month and the other animal is born in other Bays in the beginning of the month, the animal is born later, it has to be shechted earlier. When it comes to Zdei Achuza, the Machlag is whether a Matana is like a sale. According to the mayor, it's not. And therefore, if somebody gives somebody else a present a field, he cannot redeem it from him. And Yovel doesn't take it out of him. If somebody was Magdish, gave it to Hegdish, a house in Arichayma, in a walled city, we don't have this halacha that it goes to Hegdish. It's only a halacha with the race of somebody who has generations. But if somebody redeemed it from Hegdish, then the clock starts ticking for him and it becomes his. Says the Mishnah. In the beginning, what happened was the buyers would run away all the way at the end of the year because they knew that it's possible that the seller would come and redeem it. They would run away. So Hillel made a takana and he said, take the money and put it in a pushkin the base Hamikdash. And like this, it's as if you redeem the field. The, the seller could redeem the field even though the buyer is not there. So the Gemara asked, perhaps there's two takanas here. Takana number one is I could give money forcefully. And takana number two, I could give the money even though the person is not there. Lamayin of Kimina, if Hill is Misak into two things, because if you say that you're allowed to give money forcefully, so what happens in a case where a husband tells his wife, I'll give you a get on condition you give me $200. And he knows that he won't accept the money from her. As soon as she tries to give it, he won't take it. So she forces it on him. But if you say that you could force money on somebody so that she's Mugureshes. But if you say you had to come on to Hill's Takana only in a case of redeeming a field, then she's not. Magurish, have a wonderful day.